Welcome to Chuck Builds. This is part three of my DIY Home Assistant security system. This video, we will be installing Noonlight and talking about Connected I.O. Connected I.O. is a hardware device that can take over your existing wired security alarm system and use those sensors. For my situation, moving into this house, ADT was pre-installed by the previous owners. I've had bad ADT experiences in the past. They ring my doorbell about every day for a month asking if I would renew for a multi hundred dollar per month subscription. I think it was 300 something dollars for monitoring. They kept trying to upsell me on sensors that were already installed inside of my walls, windows, and doors. The whole thing was ridiculous and eventually the keypads that were on the walls started chiming and beeping until I resubscribed. I ended up ripping them out of the walls and purchased Connected I.O. on a whim, having seen it on the Home Assistant forms. I really like it. I got the alarm panel conversion kit with a add-on board. I really probably shouldn't have gotten the add-on board because I only have one zone on that being used. I came back a few months later and got the backup battery and the magnetic standoffs and the power cable splitter and kind of cleaned it up. Connected I.O. is not required for this, but they do host the intermediary connection. Um, they were the ones that wrote the Noonlight Haas, or at least they're hosting it. Uh, this person, Snicker here, shout out to you, two years strong on your code without an update and it still works great. Um, we've got a token endpoint to noonlight.connectedio for us to connect Noonlight through Connected IO to Home Assistant. I do not believe that you actually have to have Connected IO hardware to use this. So if you already have Zigbee door sensors or motion sensors, or you just want to build out your totally custom system without connected IO hardware, you can, but I would still ask that you spend some form of money on their website because they are hosting that connection and you don't want to mooch. The connected IO hardware is pretty straightforward. You just plug in your old sensors. I had to cut the resistors off of the end of my ADT wires for these sensors to show up and connected. Everything I read online said not to do that. I did it anyway, it works great. It did not work before that, so I wouldn't be too concerned. The initial install for Connected IO, I recall being slightly annoyed with the app, getting it all to connect. Something to do with the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi on the same network, I can't really recall. But I think you can skip that if you're gonna set it up straight into Home Assistant and just wire it up that way. Connected IO is the hardware that is connecting your sensors and your walls to Home Assistant, but they are also hosting the intermediary connection to Noonlight. Noonlight is a third party professional monitoring service. If you've ever been in an Uber or a Lyft and it has a call police button, this is likely what's being used. I think it says here <laughs> that Tinder uses it. I know the Google Nest also uses it and it can detect car crashes on your phone. Starts at about $3 a month and you can bump it up to about $10 a month if you require API access. The first step for installing would be to go to the Home Assistant Community Store. If you don't have the Home Assistant Community Store, check out my channel. I have another video on how to install that. And we'll go to Integrations and then Explore. And we'll just type in Noonlight and then click Download. So once it's downloaded, we have a warning that we need to restart for Home Assistant to see the integration. So we'll go to Settings, System, and Restart. So once we've restarted, we can go to Settings, integrations and add and we'll see new light exists here but if we click on this it tells us that we need to add it to the configuration yaml so we will go to the file editor and i'm going to paste the blanked version and then i'm going to come through and replace it with my real info with my id and secret before moving on so you click save we'll restart home assistant all right so home assistant has started back up and we're going to go to our settings integrations, devices, and such. And we're gonna see if we have our Noonlight switch. So having this Noonlight switch, when this gets triggered, it immediately is calling Noonlight, saying that you need police support, um, police or fire. This is not like the alarm control panel where there's a 45 second delay that you have a chance to disarm. When this gets turned on, it is, it's going, it's gone. 
Um, so we need to be careful with that. This switch is what we would be putting into our node red flow. Under security, where I have trigger alarm and I said I'm just gonna update it to noon light later. What we would do here is call the service. So over in node red, now that we have our noon light switch, we wanna make sure that we're putting that somewhere where it's gonna be <laughs> appropriately used. Um, down here, we had put a comment to update it to the noon light alarm later. That is if you want that switch on your phone when you hit that button to call the police immediately. So that's a fine place to put it to speed things up, but we're also gonna put it somewhere else. But for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna put a call service here. We'll call it call noon light. The domain should also be noon light. So with the service create alarm, we need some data here. There is an API service call that's going to be made and it requires a service and the service I require for my intrusion alarm would be police. If this was your fire alarm, you would say fire. I think it might just be for the back end. I don't think the dispatcher actually sees that. Uh, so it's something to be aware of and be ready to know what your threat is that you're requesting support for. That's not the only place we want the alarm to get called. If we are on our phone and we get the notification and we say, yeah, there's someone in the house right now, call the police. You can tap that button, it goes immediately. It doesn't wait the 45 seconds or the other 10 to trigger. But what if you never respond? What if you never hit that button? What if you're running around hiding from the guy? I, I don't know. You're gonna want when the alarm is triggered to call noon light. So we had already made this on our last video down here. I'm gonna delete this little node and paste the one we just created with all the same info. And so how this works is if your alarm is tripped and you never tap the button saying disarm and you never tap the button saying call the police, it's gonna go through the full 45 seconds and then for 10 seconds, it's gonna be triggered. And during that 10 seconds, it's gonna fire off a text-to-speech warning, which we haven't set up, and it's gonna call Noonlight. And that way you'll immediately get that out to Noonlight. Then they text you first and you have like literally two seconds to respond and they call you and they ask if you're okay. If you say yes, they'll ask you for your code. You give them the code that's on your account, not in the Home Assistant, your account code for Noonlight, and then they say, have a good day. If you say no, there's someone here right now, they have your location, they have your coordinates, they will be sending the police to your coordinates. And so that's something that's called out here in the how it works for the Noonlight Hass Alarm, um, but it's also, something you need to be aware of when you're using the app and connecting to Noonlight. Once you get set up and you do your first test calls out to Noonlight, you can email them and get a certificate of central station alarm monitoring. This is required for your insurance to get a discount for having a monitored security system. And to me, this is the gold seal that our home assistant security alarm is legitimate. We have a real uh, it says a TMA5 diamond certified location that provides 24-7, 365 redundant monitoring of our system. Essentially what that means is Noonlight will always pick up. It is up to you to ensure that your home assistant can always call out. That requires a battery backup, universal power supply on both the machine running home assistant and your router and possibly modem. Um, everything that you need to maintain power to send out your internet signal. And I would strongly encourage you to look up some kind of failover system over cellular in case your internet is out and your power is not. I think that's a little bit more rare. And thankfully with Noonlight, if you really were in a shitty situation that you needed to call out, you have the app on your phone that is battery and cellular. Um, and for the same price, I mean, $2.99 a month to get your system and your phone in car crash protection all the time. I think everybody should have Noonlight. It's great. Um, they're so fast. They're so kind on the phone. I have had no issues yet. I strongly recommend it. So I was editing this video and realized I never actually set up the connected um, board inside of Home Assistant. You could easily just come in here, find the item, click configure, then submit. If that's not showing, you can uh, add the integration, search for it, and enter the IP and port information. 
For me, I've got uh, this control panel here with one device. Uh, each of the inputs are a zone. So this one has six zones and then an out to, I think it's for like a siren. Um, so what you do for most of these is come in and hit binary sensor of off or on. So then a pop-up comes here. I just checked my old configuration. This is my patio door and you can invert it if you need to. Um, you can get change or request. Click finish and that will give you an entity and this entity can then be used for your automations. I would suggest that if you use multiple um, doors, multiple windows, that you use the helpers and create a group for all of your doors, all of your windows. So when you do your node red automations, you can just update it one time. And if you add or subtract from that, you only have to do it in the helper. You don't have to come through and update each of your flows in node red. And you'd put that somewhere like where we put our binary sensor for a door, you would do the door group. That was really fast. I hope that helps. <laughs> I didn't want to skip it entirely. The GitHub has all the information you'll need for the Noonlight integration. Thanks so much for watching. Part four is probably going to be not as soon as this part three was. I don't know when I'll get to that, but we'll, we'll get it out there at some point. If you have any questions or need any help, let me know and hit up the Chuck Bills Discord for support. Check out our website and social media. Thanks for watching.